Hi YouTube, how's it going? I wanted to come on here and make a short video on the camera that I've been using for almost 10 years. And here is the camera right here. It is the Sony a7 II mirrorless. There it is right there. And I've been using this for almost 10 years. I did do a five year review on it way back when, but uh, uh, now it's almost 10 years. And I thought I would come on here and give my opinion yet again on this camera and let you guys know if it's still a good value camera to buy in 2024, almost 2025. Right off the bat, I wanna talk about the condition that it's in. So far, the condition has been great. The quality and of the pictures, the body, the, the screen, all the buttons still work perfectly. There's nothing wrong with it. The only thing I can complain about is the battery life is is not as good as the cameras nowadays. They do use uh, a lithium ion battery, but unfortunately I find that it burns through the battery so quick, especially if you're on a two hour shoot and you really have to keep changing out the batteries. Other than that, um, the center was really good. I got this camera in 2015 and I think it came out just a year or so before that. And the sensor is really good, really nice colors, uh, good processing. At the end of the day, it doesn't have the best low light. I do struggle with low light. The ISO range is not as good as some of the new, newer Sony mirrorless cameras. Um, but what I loved with this camera, it has so much value packed into it. Uh, one thing I love about this is the uh, in-body image stabilization that it has on the sensor. So you could really take steady shots at night in low light with a very slow shutter and get very sharp images. And at the time, even 10 years ago, that was huge for me. And even till this day, this camera still performs very well. Um, I do have a few lenses that I use on this camera. And one of the main ones that I use is the 50 millimeter by Canon actually. I picked this adapter up. It's called a Photodiox Pro and it's uh, it converts the Canon mount to the Sony E mount. Um, it still retains the autofocus I'll buy it not as fast as a proprietary Sony lens, but it does the job and I love the colors that the Canon lens creates. So this is one of the main lenses I use. It's really small, it's very light, and I can carry it anywhere with me. Now, when I do com commercial shoots, I really don't do it anymore nowadays. If I wanted to shoot weddings, if I wanted to go traveling or I wanted to document something, then I would go ahead and use my big lens right here, which is the 24 to 70. G Master, which is the Mark I, the first version that it came out. And it's still with me. It's super heavy, really big. And when it zooms out, it does stick out even more. However, the images that this lens creates is astounding. It's really sharp. The color production is really good. And you know you're gonna get a good product when you're shooting with this lens. The autofocus is lightning fast, and you do have um, uh, focus holding mode right here as well, which really helps when you're shooting certain objects. And there's also a manual toggle here from autofocus to manual focus. Now talking about the value of this camera, is this still a good camera to buy in 2024? Now I would say it depends who you are as a photographer. If you're starting off, I think this is one of the best cameras to get. Because this camera does come with a full frame sensor, you get a lot of the benefits that come with it. And of course, you have all these manual controls and you can just learn if you don't know, understand some of the settings. This is a perfect camera to learn on. And because it's a full frame sensor, this is a really sought after camera as well because it's just really reliable. It has all the buttons you need. And if you're a beginner, you have more than enough time to go ahead and learn about all the features and you can get to know it better. And one thing I would say why it's a good beginner camera is because obviously there's way better cameras nowadays compared to the a7 II. However, you cannot beat the price point that this camera gives you. I was just searching online on eBay and certain other websites and I saw like slightly used versions, maybe 2000 shutter clicks. They were going for about 500 to 600 Canadian. So if that's US money, you're probably looking at even cheaper, maybe 300, $400. You can pick one up and you can get professional, high quality photos that you can slap onto a billboard, print it off, whatever you need to do, and you're gonna get very reliable quality photos. So I think this camera, yes, it's a little bit aged now, and you can, you can spend more money and get way better cameras, but for this price range, you cannot beat it. It will give you really good photos for a fraction of the price. I do have some accessories that I've been using to make the camera user experience a lot better. 
And one of the things I would say is the battery life, I have to address it. So I did go ahead and purchase a battery grip. This allows you to store two cam, uh, sorry, two batteries in this unit, in this compartment. And you can go ahead and plug it in to the bottom of your camera and it's going to allow you to run two cameras. So when you're out and you're shooting during the day, you don't have to worry about not having enough battery. And another pro for this grip is it allows you to shoot uh, vertically and there's an extra button here for your shutter. And it's really nice in the hand. It gives you a nice balanced feel. You get very reliable performance. Now overall, I think the build quality of this camera is really good. After 10 years of use, I'm very impressed how it's held up. I've taken it in the snow, I've, I've had it in the rain, I went traveling all over the place with it, and it still holds up. Of course, there's some bumps and dents and scratches on the corners, but overall, the quality, the performance is still the exact same. So there is one issue I have to address about this camera. About three years into my ownership, there was an issue where the shutter would not open when I did turn on the camera. So therefore I had to take it in to get it rep repaired and it was covered under warranty. So that wasn't an issue, but uh, just something to, re to uh, be aware of when you are purchasing something used and making sure that all the functions do work properly. But overall for $500, you cannot go wrong and you're going to have a blast with a great camera, especially nowadays you get so many lens choices for a fraction of the price. It doesn't even have to be Sony lenses. I know Sigma lenses are great as well that, that have a lot of E-mount lenses made especially for Sony. And yes, you can go and pick up a brand new uh, Sony a6700, but that's gonna run you about 2,000, 2,500 with the accessories added on to. So it might not be worth it if you're just getting into the scene. Now, if you're an intermediate photographer or even a professional photographer, I still recommend this camera. Um, even if it's a backup camera, I think that's always needed. If you're shooting a wedding or you're out shooting a gig, you don't wanna just bring one camera. You gotta bring two just in case something happens with the first one. The investment of this camera will be so insignificant. It's only $500, probably a price of a new lens, and that will get you started, prepared for your shoots. So highly recommended. Definitely guys, check it out. And thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.